Hey guys, I have a new challenge today to fix my GPU. I got artifacts, blue, red, yellow, whatever, when you boot up in your BIOS you get the red lines and shit and when you boot up in the Windows it gets even worse until it freezes. So what I have here is NVIDIA GeForce 9800GX2. I have two of these and they're running in quad SLI, used to run in quad SLI and this one burned down so I have only one left in my computer which is still kind of working so I've never opened this before right so this is like five or six years old and if you look at the thermal compounds here yeah, uh, the previous guy who used to own these cards never actually bothered to reapply the thermal grease so it's all uh, pretty solid you know not much residue in it. so I dis dis dismantle it I put my screws there nice and tight and uh, I got my new thermal paste I have my SLI cable ready and I have some aluminum foil that's gonna be used to fix it to get a bit oven so basically what you do is you take uh, your card, you wrap it up in foil and you leave the processor units out, like you cut a hole or something, I don't know. And um, you bake it for 8 to 12 minutes on 200 degrees Celsius or 385 Fahrenheit. And that's what I'm about to do. See you in a bit. Alright then, so basically there are two methods to bake them. One is wrapping them up in a aluminum foil and the other one is just, you know, just bake them as it is. What uh, people do is, uh, they some of them turns them up and down, so only the top part is uh, kind of affected by the heat. So basically melting all the soldered uh, shit. But uh, some people are more concerned about uh, things falling off, like chips falling off of it. Because that lead is, uh, that solder is lead free and it melts really fast. So, and, and you don't really want uh, to expose your processor unit to the direct heat. So, the, another solution would be using the aluminum foil, what happens here is uh, the, all the heat is being trapped inside the aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is really good heat transfer, uh, nearly as good as copper, so all the heat is evenly spread inside and it stays there. Um, so basically you, what you do is you just cut a little, little hole for the, for the processor and not to be uh, as affected as, as all the tra trapped heat inside of the foil. So for this method you would use uh, aluminum foil for boils, uh, balls or something, you know, just to kind of keep it steady and shit. Um, I suppose for this one as well, but it's your choice, it's your call. See you in a bit. So, this is one way of doing it. As you can see, it's also a little bit elevated, all nice and tight. Um, so, this is method one, and this is method two. Um, basically, this is what I'm going to be doing, because um, I was watching a lot of videos on YouTube as well. Um, this video is nothing new, obviously. It's just to approve, or not to approve that the method actually works. But anyway, this is what I'm going to be using and I think oven is ready and it's about to put it in. Alright then, here we go. 10 minutes. So it's it's entirely up to you which method you prefer more, uh, more if it's wrapping them up or putting them in as they are. Um, this is of course what, what it's so called poor man's method of soldering. Um, the best option here would be using the heat gun, obviously. 
the professionals they're actually pro the real professionals uh, that are reviving video cards and motherboards something like um gpus for laptop for example where you can't change the processor really but you can fix it this way as well they're using a heat gun and they set it up to i don't know like 400 degrees they put aluminum foil uh, around the gpu unit and you know just heats out around a bit like spreading the heat and that's how they fix it and this is just another way to do it as well some people say you can use a hair dryer uh, but I don't I don't believe it I don't think it gives you enough heat uh, if it does you just have to spend like lots of time doing it also that Porsche isn't mine that's hers that cat is mine and the other cat is mine. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I see you in bed. So it's been 10 minutes now. Baking them. Um, you probably can't say. But I, I left the open, uh, oven open for, for now. I'm going to leave it open for like, I don't know, 10 minutes uh, as well. Maybe 20 minutes. Then I'll take it out, check check if, uh, how hot it is, and uh, if required, I'm gonna keep it uh, like that even longer. By the way, uh, just a side note: if you have these little rascals at home as well, um, remember the saying: Curi "Curiosity killed the cat." So these are like super curious things, right? Huh? So be careful with them around when you're leaving shit like this open, okay? Hello. Hello. Are you shy? Are you shy? No, she's not. So here they are, cooling here. Um, I, I was kind of trying to inspect around, you know, watch out all the plastics, if they melted and shit. But all the plastics looks okay so far. Nothing's really out of order. Yeah. The only thing I noticed is these uh, kind of LED kind of type of things, you know. They're, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if you can see that. But they are kind of, they became kind of bubbly. You know? They're like bubbles inside of them, so they're dead. <clears throat> Those lights are definitely dead. But who cares about them? Everything else seems to in order. So, hopefully it'll work. Um, I'm, as I said, I'm really, really skeptical about this. Um, <laughs> okay, I've seen lots of videos and lots of people saying this works and shit, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. But we'll see. We'll see. Well, it didn't work. So basically, I I'll, I'll, I got just a blank screen, and I said it powered up. Uh, all the lights came up. I don't remember if the fan came up, but no, it didn't work. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, leave for one extra minute, but this time I'm gonna leave it upside down. Um, and I'm, I'm in a cooker. I'm only setting the, the top to be the, the heater thing. So, previous time I had the top and the bottom heating, and now it's going to be only the top heating. So, let's see if that works out. If not, well, I'm busted. So, I ended up baking it twice. Um, the power comes on. We have both blue and green lights. Uh, the computer is booted up. It's in, booted up in Windows at the moment, but... Nothing. So, yeah. It's not all like, you know, fairy tales and shit. It's not like everyone's selling it, saying that it's working. Like 100% working. But it's, apparently it's not. So, sometimes it's just not meant to be. So anyway, if you are doing an oven trick yourself, 
I wish you the best of the luck. And thanks for watching. So, 2 o'clock at midnight and I'm finally done with this. Took me all day. Had some BIOS problems or I don't know. I got the wrong check some so probably power supply or motherboard is dying. Anyway, I got it to work and at first I thought it's not gonna work because I didn't get the video signal out of it. But then I launched the windows and I installed all the drivers and like and I used my the working GPU to install all the drivers and then it just magically worked. Maybe it cooked itself in, in a computer for a while and then suddenly the output started to work as well. And no graphical artifacts. Everything's perfect. <clears throat> so as you can see, each one of them has its own each one of these monitors has its own graphics card. And um I tried to launch a three-way SLI giving the right monitor full kind of video card the capability as well but you know that's kind of useless but um here we go it's four GPUs quad SLI and uh, it's all working playing some battlefield here My my frame rate is so low. It's it's because of my CPU. It's it's um it's a really good good CPU, core to extreme. But it's bottlenecking my current GPU badly. As you can see, low FPS, but the GPU usage is quite low. And I'm running on stock clocks here. Let me just put up clocks and. See if that helps an FPS a bit. There we go. Oh, it did actually, I think. No, it's almost the same anyway. Yeah, no, it's almost the same. It's definitely a CPU bottleneck. I'm gonna be overclocking my CPU very soon. But yeah, the point of this video is that it works flawlessly. So, as you can see, this is the CPU, almost full usage. CPU temperature is pretty low, so ready for overclocking. GPU usage, very low. GPU temperature is very low. Um, for 9800GX2, those temperatures are quite uh, really low because the the card itself is known for being quite hot and uh, yeah so again thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video bye